And hello, everybody. My name is Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast. We're coming to you live from the top 16 of the Crossroads Classic here at Family Time Games. Today, I'm joined by my co-pilot, William Higwood. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Well, would have been more excited to be in the top 16, but... This is second best, Dion. That, that <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so uh, today we got Zach Zagidi versus Steven Crouch. Scum versus the Republic. Here we're going to go ahead and break down these squads and uh, and see what we got here. We got a top 16. This was a graduated cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a clean graduated cut because there actually was 17 foreign ones, but one person had to drop out for... For who knows, who knows why they weren't, weren't able to make it today. They didn't. They didn't plan. It sounded like they didn't plan on making day two. Yeah, they were like, day two ain't gonna happen. Oh, it oh. happened. So uh, let's go ahead. And let's break down this list. And uh, yeah, so many people are saying, holy overlap. We're gonna get to see yeah, some road yeah, today. Yeah, there's some road today. Uh, <laughs> so let's start with uh, Stephen Crouch here on your right. You're bet to all champion. If we're betting down. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, so Steven Crouch is flying the Galactic Republic. Uh, around here, there has been a resurgence of LATs, especially Warthog. Um, so you know, very many throughout the tournament. This particular variety has a Warthog without upgrades. Remember that he can keep non-limited ships at range 0 to 2 from being destroyed until the end of the phase. Uh, super good ability even works on himself you or a friendly non-limited ship So those non-limited ships are going to be the squad 7 veteran uh, With commander Cody, uh, that's a i3 arc uh, Very good bruiser for the Republic here with that three dice front gun Clone commander Cody uh, as a way to apply strain to the enemy if they can't if the attack missed and they canceled one hit or crit result. Uh, so moving on to the other generics then is the Jedi Knight 7Bs. So popular uh, right now, even with their little bit of points increase. Uh, the 7B gives them that 3-2-3-3 three, three, three stat line. Uh, plus as well they have those fine-tuned controls allowing them to spend their single force charge for a boost or barrel roll after fully executing. So most of the time we'll see them uh, either a double reposition or let's say uh, focus or reposition then focus, uh, which is really good with actually pull a board hog is one thing I forgot to mention, mm -hmm. which was the fire convergence. Fire if convergence. Seen, if you've never seen a lad out there supporting its friends, how it's going to do that is with fire convergence. Has two charges, uh, gets one back each round, and can spend one of those charges to allow a friendly ship to reroll up to a two attack dice as long as the lat can have the defender in its mm -hmm. arc. It's, it's, it's like that lad is also shooting. It's kind of like exactly, a thematic exactly. idea there. Yeah, so like, uh, why coordinate a target lock when you can just give them rerolls? Just instead? do it whenever you want. Yeah, so it's uh, very strong, very strong, because you get to see the dice results and then find out if you needed to fire convergence or not. So moving over to Zach here with this coming zillion. Scum and villainy. No, I like it better. Scum and zillainy. Scum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this squad starts off with Sarasu. That's going to be our top dog here. The only person not fighting at Initiative 3 Road. Sarasu is an M3A. That allows other ships at range 0 to 1. Well, I guess itself and other ships at range 0 to 1 to reroll one of its defense dice. So a pseudo like four agility ship, pretty good. I uh, can see the significant points difference between it and some other ships like these Tarsari Point Veterans. 
Those are what the other three M3As are. Sorry, Point Veterans, uh, just a generic here, but the their upgrades are certainly very powerful. Those are Auto Blaster Cannons. You're gonna get uncancelable crits and an additional die in the bullseye. So three in the bullseye at range two, and then four dice bullseye at range one. Uh, because the these uh, M3As already have a two primary, uh, you're really only looking for those bullseyes. Mm -hmm. But Digging. combined with marksmanship for guaranteed crits, uh, if a couple of these can get behind you, they're going to be pushing through automatic crits. Very, very powerful there. And then rounding out the list is Kane Jarrus in the Moldy Crow. Uh, with that single force point, he can reduce an attack's dice by one. Uh, basically handing out depletes. Then the Moldy Crow gives him that three dice front gun and uh, the ability to hold on to a couple focus tokens as well. So ends up being a uh, pretty powerful piece. You know, I love Hawks. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very strong right now. So, uh, but Kanan's Jairus' ability is stronger the fewer ships the enemy has. Mm -hmm. There's a five ship list he's playing against. Four ship, but yeah. Oh, we're called. Oh, right. Sorry, I looked. I looked at his number. He is. He is five. <laughs> he is five. The other ship. The other side. Uh, but yeah, reducing down uh, a big range one attack from these Jedi or from the Ark uh, can really keep these M three A's alive. As long if you can keep them at three dice or less, uh, the each time the M three A's have a chance to evade. Um, that Sarasu has been. Apparently very powerful in this combination when you're double stacking these kind of defensive modifications can really, really uh, prevent the enemy from doing significant damage. Uh, looks like we are done toilet bowling and we are jousting in the middle of the board. It is time. It is the time. Yeah, we'll see how... Uh, I'm really curious to see how Sarasu ends up faring, you know, being able to have three agility ships, which is already pretty yeah, strong, yeah. and being able to try to get a little bit of consistency out of that with those rerolls oh, is pretty awesome. Especially Kanan, too. Kanan mm -hmm. has limited health on his two agility. Uh, even though he does have a lot of focus mods, blanks are his enemy. we got two minutes left in the Choose Your Champion voting. Looks like right now Zach Rigidi is the favorite. Uh, with a 61% lead in the voting. Again, there's two minutes left. Go ahead and uh, get your votes in now. It's really I mean, Once we get dice rolling, we're going to go ahead and close that down as they, like you said, they kind of went right at it. Uh, we're meeting in the middle of the board. And one thing uh, that, what I, that I want to point out is I really like Steven's positioning. Um, the lat that, yeah, couple lats no, that we've no seen. The, yeah, no he's, the lat side arc here. He's got a big side arc there. He's not jousting the, with directly the with no. the lat. It's going to be on the outside of the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, so beautiful turret lane set up through here. We could keep just r keeping that arc each round into the center of the board. Perfect placement there. And here we go. We got our first attacks. Looks like we have... That's probably Sarasu attacking somebody. Two blanks, yep. Pew, pew. Only got rebels on offense. That's Sarasu. about <laughs> defense, yep. <laughs> like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> Hello. All right, so Steven here is the first player. And for anybody who's maybe just joining us for the first time or isn't used to how we have this set up with Road, look at the top of your screen right there. You will see the uh, the token get moved back and forth, and uh, you will know who is the first player. Looks like we have one hit there and an evade. Next one takes a strain there due to clone commander Cody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Warhog must have been just out for that. Mm-hmm. And we're reaching here with the red 7B Jedi. It looks like Steven is trying to claim the power of number pink. Does have a pink dot mm -hmm. on the on mm -hmm. that base. That's some GSP lore for you. If you don't know, I'm sure somebody in the chat can help you out. All right. And it's going to be strained on this attack. Here we go. 7B Jedi, two hits. Looks like Fire Convergence is uh, not active right now, so just two hits. And got a squiggle there. Are you willing to spend the focus? It's early in the game. He's debating reroll or focus. Looks like he's just yeah, going to go take. Go ahead, it. take the guarantee. 
your offense comes from range one bullseyes, not the not these pot shots. So. All right. He's reaching out there. And here we go. I just saw Kanan's ability just get used to reduce the number of attack die coming in here from the Arc 170. Two hits, plenty of squiggles in the box. There you go. Wrath Tavik knows the knows the power of number pink. Uh, let's see. Was the this is the the lat blanket of focus? One hit and two evades. All right, M3As get a chance to shoot back here. Uh, the Galactic Republic failing to do any damage here at long range. I feel like that's that's part of the the strat here for for Zach, right? He's leaning into the the def defensive opportunities, mm -hmm. and um, you know the, the auto blasters. I, I mean, I'm going to expect for most of the game these guys are going to be facing down each other, and it's like, hey, if I get the bullseye on, fantastic, cool, it worked out. But that's not the priority. Uh, you want to make sure you're holding on oh, the defense. Awesome. We've got Thank some you more much, swag man. here to add to the GSP mystery boxes. Ooh, I really like this this owl squadron one. That's cool. Or what are, it's, oh. both, it's both Catan, both Catan's helmet. I forget what they. It's the Night Watch. The Night Watch, yeah. <laughs> I see you. I'll uh, see. So checking some bullseyes here. Uh, Lord Jason five five six asking, are the bets closed? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we've been shooting. Yeah, I saw a couple people in chat. I think it was Steel Water. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you had a great time yesterday. Uh, and also, I think uh, we got James. Wow, this was a reveal. I did not expect it to be Boba Fett. I guess it should have. All right, and here's that attack. Hit, hit, crit with marksmanship. The bullseye was on. One squiggle. We're going to go ahead and take two damage right away on that ARC-170 carrying Clone Commander Cody. Dang, that was range two bullseye? Yep. Wow. Okay, now that I see that range ruler out. Okay, I see it. I could see it. All right, and here we go. We got one hit. Focus, uh -huh. spend, no damage there on the arc. And looks like we're going to have another shot here. This is going to be at range three to either the Jedi or the Arc-170. Arc-170 is going to be the, the marked target as it has less agility. Uh, makes sense. And no mods as well. Spend focus for two. Gets another squiggle. That's going to go ahead and be shields down. Six hole left. Had one more uh, because of the range bonus. Still one damage. Alright. We're regenning force. And... Party time. Sixty-one minutes and change here left on the clock on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you guys see any of those fuzzy lines kind of show up on the screen, it's nothing nothing on, on your guys' side. Uh, the way our dice dice cam magic works. Um, Unfortunately, our lighting isn't quite at the angle that we normally have it, uh, just because of, of the table setup. Uh, so we're getting getting a little bit more um, edge bleed than usual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got some Australians watching the chat. It's, it's correction, Sunday evening. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, future people. <laughs> Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Mm -hmm. Getting more and more live X-Wing, including Adepticon at the end of March. That's right. If you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock, right. or uh, maybe you just, you know, you, you haven't heard, which is fine. Uh, at Adepticon, which is one of the Midwest premier gaming conventions, uh, we are, we, Gold Squadron, are going to be running an official, you heard that right, an official 
premier event, the X-Wing World Open Qualifier, uh, hosted by yours truly, Gold Squadron. We're going to put on a great show, awesome tournament. Uh, we're expecting, and I know that AMG wants to have completely out the uh, upcoming uh, rule set, um, any changes to points, list building. We're going to have the... Um, Objectives going live, live is going to be your first chance to get a competitive feel for that. People, uh, we're from what we're hearing, um, AMG says that we're, they're hoping that Lucasfilm has everything done by the end of the month, and uh, we basically will have uh, have a month to dig into the content, find the best strategies, and see what we can get. And as of right now, I believe for the main event, we've sold about 130 tickets. Nice. All right, so that's 130 tickets uh, going at it now um, at the at the convention. So super excited about that. And I want to tell you guys, my, my plan is I want to make sure that uh, everybody who's at this event uh, walks away with something. You're going to have a good time, and uh, it's going to uh, have an awesome feeling. Feel. I really want to make sure that the event is more than just uh, just X-wing. We're gonna to try to have an experience, Will. Ooh, an experience. We got some. We got some things in the works that uh, are gonna look real, real snazzy. I tell you what, snazzy is the word. Snazzy is the word. <laughs> Maybe. We're, we're going for gasps. That's right. Socket <laughs> <Sacre> blue. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so make sure if if uh, if you can be there, I would suggest that if you you've been uh, been wondering if it's if it's time for you to come out and play some X-wing, uh, my answer is, yeah, come out and play some X-wing. All right, here we go. The Tensori Point veterans are on the move. Zach is the first player this turn, dropping down the focus. So you know, one of the things we've talked about um, before, strategically, will is the idea of you know. When you get to move first, shoot first, the different or shooting the shooting first, the decisions you have to make on your tokens. It's like, mm -hmm. are you more an aggressive player? Do you usually go ahead and spend those tokens right away on offense, or are you more about holding it off for defense? I think for Zach, you know, he's probably going to be more willing to spend it on offense since he has already defensive modifications. Because Sarasu is like every single round. What do you think? Uh, I could I could see that. Um, if Maybe not if, uh, like, one's, like, getting focused down. Uh, but, yeah, if you got one of those uh, four dice attacks, you, you better spend your, your focus token on it. That's going to be your opportunity to do some real damage, uh, especially to these Jedi. The Ark and the Latin you could find with your two dice guns, but the Jedi are going to be pretty difficult to pin down without that auto blaster. All right, so we got a bit of a block there. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. Zach accidentally <laughs> bumped it. He bumped his, his, the, the template away from the rock. So no, no, uh, no block onto the obstacle there. But hey, that only, that only helps out, Steven. We're going to go ahead and perform this one bank. It lands Beautiful. safely there. And, nice. you know, it's funny that... This, uh, this was a mental exercise this round, by the way, about sure, who's going first. It sure was. And, like, this one, it was definitely, like, who's... One of they, us They both the took block. the risk, right? <laughs> they both they both took the risk. That I want that space. No, I want that space. So funny. All right. The lack going to continue to circle the outside. Uh, and I'm sorry. Somebody commented on the outer blaster being crossed out. That was just a, a misclick. We can cross. We can cross every upgrade out if we wanted to. But it's just a, one time use. I wish they were. <laughs> I wish they had charges. But when the, especially when they make you sad. Yeah, they're they're uncancelable crits. Probably should have been like a three time charge or something, right? Mm. Maybe not every single crit. Every time, get good. Yeah, I don't think they really put through the paces of. Uh, a five crit Sunny Bounder, or uh, what was it, Ada Anakin mm -hmm. running around with marksmanship and crit bot. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Just rip the cannon off of his Ada too. Just just snap it off. Yeah. Sorry, you're not allowed to fill this anymore. Hey, Liam Burnett with that Prime Gaming sub. Uh, unfortunately, the sub counter for this weekend hasn't been working, uh, but we do appreciate you. Thank you, Romer DS, for gifting that sub. We've been doing some awesome giveaways. We got some more stuff to do. 
All right, so let's see. We have the careful surgery of marking ships to see if they fit places. This one's trying to turn right in the spot, yep. right up, in front of Kanan. Setting up, uh, yep, a block on that. Kanan, a hawk, potentially, and then hopefully have enough room to 4K. It looks like that might not end up fitting. Nope. But you could imagine, though, had Steven moved first, you have the Ark sitting here, right? Mm -hmm. And you have this Jedi maybe even boosting here, taking up this space, right? This guy coming in, taking up this space. Could have been a big traffic jam in there. Uh, but instead, it looks like he's pretty much just going nowhere. Mm -hmm. that his own Jedi was in the front. Uh, that's okay, though. Gets that big four dice gun. Out ready to roll. And Felsepto dropping five subs in the chat. Thank you so much, my friend. Looks like Sarasu is coming through. Going to be in the back of the formation. I think Zach really enjoying going first this turn. We have all those M3As out there with focus tokens. A couple of bullseyes aligned here on that ARC 170. Mm -hmm. Yeah, between Kanan's three dice, this guy's bullseye, Sarasu, and maybe even this range one. We can see the, the arc go down this round. Uh, which is sad. It's kind of sad for Warthog being matched up against all I threes. Mm -hmm. Like unless Sarasu kills you, you don't really need Warthog. Yep, two hits, and there we go. We're gonna go ahead and start that damage race on two. The Arc 170 takes a couple of damage cards. Here we go. Next shot. This is going to be a three dice attack. Have an offensive reroll with a target lock. Blank to blank. Two hits. Got the squiggle. Takes another one. Points are scored so far this round 24 to 0. We have another one coming in. Ooh, this should be out of blaster though. His auto blaster is front dark. I think that's what they were discussing. Yep. Showed them that auto blaster is. Are you not in the front dark? There it is. There it is. There's a crit. Uncancelable. Just, just takes it on the shield. And one of the awesome things um, you know, at this tournament, we had a we had a ton of people um, who were just, who were ready to show off their their lists on stream and stuff like that. It was really mm -hmm. cool to see the, uh, the the confidence. I love I love it. Uh, here we go. We got a four dice attack coming in here. Marksmanship, Marksmanship. two hits and a crit, and those are all going. I think Squad Seven veteran just went down. Yep. Sure did. And got a crit in there at means, the end. Means absolutely nothing because that arc already shot. But I want to know how hard did it explode. And we're at initiative three, so it won't be cleared off the board yet. This is going to be a range one shot going into the 7B Jedi. Spend for two. Got two evades. Natty's great strategy, sir. Um... And I see Kanan spending the force to reduce the, the attack here. This is probably the Arc 170 here at Initiative 3. Got the trail mix. Maybe thinking about fire convergence? Nope. We're going to go ahead and leave it at one crit, and that's enough. There's Clone Commander Cody triggering there. Strain on the yellow M3A and the... Delta 7B coming in here Ooh. with the full string. This is going to be I'll put a, a crit through. Oh, yeah. this uh, That was a hit. All right. Three hits and a crit. Uh, should be strained. Yeah, we'll go ahead and, and correct this. Hey, was that the strained one? So, two agility? <laughs> there it is. Sarasu. 
And so. that means that's going to be taking two hits and a crit. Yep. And fuel leak. All right, blink crit. Mm. This is probably the best situation for, uh, for Zach. Ah, uh, we see here. That's why we, they just picked up the, uh, um, what am I saying? That's why they, the arc didn't modify its dice. It's blinded down there. Dylan. Oh, close your eyes. We got a lock here. Dig in, spend for one with the force. And got the one. <laughs> Man, Steven, the Steven is digging. He's looking, looking for gonna some. It's going to have to be the arc to do it then. It's all right. The arc, the lat. Or sorry, the lat. The lat will put, it, put the team on its back. One hit. Listen, we haven't called the, the tyranny of three agility for no reason. Sometimes when this, they show up, they show four up. Four agility. Look out. Okay. Zach and able to take down the arc in the joust. But that's that's Steven's I wouldn't say throw away piece, but it's the piece that uh He's most likely to go down first in most matchups, yeah. right? You would think? Yeah, and and uh, the least effective in the end game as well. Mm -hmm. Limited maneuverability, limited agility as well. Um I do want to uh shout out it was uh Fel Septo. Mm -hmm. I think that was his name. Dropped uh, a couple more subs as well as Surfer 20. Hi, Pipe. Or no, Surfer 20 was just chatting in there. Thanks for joining us, though, Surfer 20. Somebody says, I really need a Tyranny shirt, Dion. Hey, you can pick it up at goldsquadronpodcast.com. That is ready and available for you. I actually got to pick one of those up myself. I actually don't have a physical one of those. <laughs> well, uh, you should, Dion. All right. I also need to do a pancake pilot. Pilot flipping some pancakes. Yes. So Smikey's in the chat saying, let's go, Zach. I mean, right, Zach right now leading 48 to 17 right now. Now, if you wanted to check out the list that were played this weekend, you can go ahead and type exclamation point list. Uh, you will see a link to a PDF that will be live for a little bit so that you guys have access to those. I'm sure, uh, the, sure the list will end up on List Fortress here in the near future as well. It's always interesting looking at tournament data, making those decisions. You know, as we have a couple upcoming next week, uh, friend of the show, Stephen Parker of Dad Gaming, is going to be um, helping out Frontline Gaming with their Cherokee Open X-Wing mm, event. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah, it's, not, it's not an official event, but hey, you got people coming together to play X-Wing. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, man. Live X-Wing. If you're in the area, go check it out. Cherokee Open. I know they got some awesome prizes getting put together as well. So go ahead, check it out. I know there's uh, several links to them in the non-GSP events channel on our Discord. Yeah, we were talking on the podcast about whether lists, how the lists were going to develop. And we've seen here... The almost separatist and Grand Republic flip flop, and mm -hmm. uh, the the people making the cut, and honestly, just the list being played, a bunch of uh, Republic uh, here able to make it into the cut, and zero separatists. None. I think we had like under five just in the whole tournament. Yeah, very few people actually ran them. I saw some. Uh, there were some H and P's. Mm -hmm. I so remember an H and P squad. Donald, Donald yeah. brought some H and P's. There was a a droid swarm. I think somebody was flying the uh, Daniel Lim version, the um, uh -huh. Las yeah. Vegas yeah. open yep. with the uh, with Seer. Yeah, I did yeah. see a uh, a Django Grievous plus two um, out there as well. So uh, 
a little bit of representation, but not the, oh, we got to bring, mm-hmm. we got to bring the Vulture Swarm. We got to bring Django and Maul uh, kind of reaction, uh, which I, I like to see, actually, uh, the different mentalities of the different, uh, probably areas more than metas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which we were talking, we noted that the, both these guys are online players as well. That's so, right, yeah, playing out. The, you, we know because they have GSIDs. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I know you play online. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a big... I'm very confused what's happening here. Oh, they're marking them off for the 4K. Mm-hmm. I see now. Um, but yeah, that's uh, very interesting to s- to think about how you know because it's no longer what's the your game stores meta like what online tournaments are you playing in who do you normally practice with online where are they from mm-hmm. right so that 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 blending of what your local meta actually is is yep, I very think- fascinating. If I remember right, I'm trying to remember from like social studies as a kid, I think they call that like, it's almost like globalization, right? Oh, yeah. It's like okay. the, the X-Wing world has um, the, the the metas overall, I think, has shrunk, right? And not, it's not shrunk in like diversity, but the access to data is better. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so you can you can see the evolution happening globally. Um, I, th- you know, v- very, it's, I think it's very rare where you'll end up seeing, um, you know, a, just, uh, you have to find people who like, they don't play online. They don't watch anything. You know, they just kind of play X-Wing at their local store oh, sure. and, sure. Yeah. uh, without any of those connections to really see a like ridiculous meta where you're like, Oh, you guys apparently are in a, uh, you know, rebel Z 95 meta or, you know, I don't, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> Right, right, where like uh, yeah, every list either has Han or Boba in it, and no one, no one's flying like the sequel factions or something exactly, like that. Exactly, yeah. So they've super. never seen a Kylo in, or I haven't seen a Kylo in years, kind of situation. Exactly, exactly. Like you know, there was that that joke for a long time, which honestly I think it was self-imposed by the Europeans. The whole like small European meta. Small European meta. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, kind of a guy, joke. guys, yeah. let it go, let it go. You know, you're not small. I mean that was the that was the irony <laughs> of it. Of just like because they're so interconnected, right. it felt like just one very small meta. All right, here we go. We're getting K turns here from Sarasu and the yellow Tensari point yeah, veteran as well. We saw, we saw this guy sloop out. The pretty much everybody K turning here That's except right. for the <laughs> ones who can't. Let's all. Oh, I guess this guy as well. Let's all flip the dip if we can. All right, hit focus. Ooh, double double blanks. And that's going to go ahead and be a shield on the red Jedi Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like this focus fire here onto the latch with that marksmanship bullseye. If you can take the lad out and then hopefully go uh, f- like three on two versus mm-hmm. the Jedi, have a great chance of pulling it off. Now, as we wait here, let's go ahead and get into our engagement phase. And Steven is up first. He's the first player. Remember, you can see that first player token moving back and forth at the top of your screen. And Steven firing here with his 7B Jedi. Use the Force. Three hits. Not sure if this is into Sarasu or the yellow one right now. Probably the yellow one as it is the one that is damaged. And not enough. It's going to go ahead and I think and take out that yellow Tensari. Yes, he did. Ooh, that comes as a relief to Steven, I'm sure. Uh, because now the M3 is starting to get separated from Sarah Sue. Might mm-hmm. be able to start picking them off a little bit faster. Here we go. Another Jedi. I think this is range one into Kanan. With Kanan's ability getting triggered here. Hit crit. Enough. No, that must have been into Sarah Sue, actually. Because it would have been three dice instead of four. All 
All right, here we go. Another shot here from Steven. The lat firing into Sarasu. Two hits. Sarasu. I like how Zach puts a little bit of elbow into that throw. <laughs> so I think really that's... got to get it spinning. That's right. So Try spinning. That's a good trick. So just trying to take a look here. We see a shield off of... Yep, that's Sarasu right there. Yeah, at this point, you might just need to go in Sarasu for a while. Next shot. Hit crit coming in from Kanan Jarrus into the Jedi Knight. No mods on this one. Roll up. Single squiggle. You're going to go ahead and take another shield. He's got one more left. He has some range three shots into that one. Remember, they're all at initiative three here. So... Zach's like, I'm the Warthog now. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, <clears throat> it's a little bit of a relief, though, that, like, Warthog's not tethered to these other ships. He just can focus on uh, fire convergence. Uh, whiffs on that attack. So I think Zach has one more attack left. I'm going to go with that red M3A. We're going to be focusing on the lat here for the next couple shots with the red and the blue M3A. This might be a range one attack. It is hit crit. Target lock reroll. Not going to get it there. Kingdom for a focus. Gets an evade. So that's going to be a single shield. Lat looking like a thick boy. Last shield down. Another range one shot. This one I think is in the bullseye four dice coming in. Sure is. He's going to go ahead and... Is it, doesn't he have marksmanship? So one damage for sure. We'll call it two. Hit crit, and that crit will be hitting the hole. And I think we just got half points on Warthog. Mm-hmm. Let's see what that crit is. Yeah, second hand. I think we're cleaning up for the end of the round. Yep. I'll go see what that crit is. Then. All right. Fantastic. So while Will is doing that, I want to let you guys know that this stream and all of our games this weekend brought to you by our Gold Squadron patrons. You are the ones that make this possible, being able to uh, go around uh, from city to city and uh, and bring you guys these games where normally, uh, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be able to afford this without you guys. And with you, we are able to travel uh, from city to city, get airplane tickets, pay for gas, hotels and all that so that we can bring you this premier X-Wing action. And uh, one of the things we are looking forward uh, to doing in the future is uh, is trying to see if we can get a tour going again. You know, we do these big events. Uh, but we've done regional tours before around the United States. And, you know, we, we've, we have some different things that we would like to do. And uh, also gives us the opportunity to do things like some of the upcoming projects that we have uh, in the works here for the community and super excited to get those announced and off the ground here in the in the coming months. So if you want to become a patron, a large group of supporters, you can head to patreon.com slash gold squadron and thank you to everybody who has. All right. So that, that crit was a fuel leak and I did confirm that uh, seriously, the only uh, damage other than the dead ship is uh Cersei's shield so fuel leak fuel leak not good against marksman ships sounds like a bad day yeah gonna have a bad time <laughs> computer here is uh Getting a little testy with us, Will. What? Uh, you know, it's it's yeah. Give, she, it, a, give it a. Can, it can could be a little 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 picky, you know. Give it a strong talking to. <laughs> Listen, young man. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Uh, oh, our 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 friend James Ritter and and your. Soon to be co-host. That's right, James. James Ritter saying, "How's it going this morning?" Um, starting this week, Will and James are going to be taking the reins on those Wednesday night streams. We're also going to be talking about some of the, uh, like I said, one of, one of those upcoming projects here soon. Um, it should be it should be good stuff. How's Stanny doing? He's in the top sixteen. I didn't know that. What happened? Are those facts. 
Today's Danny's birthday? I don't know. They, they lying to us. I mean, Ryan doesn't seem like a person who would put a fake birthday on, on Facebook. But I don't know. Hey, Zach, I need you. Can you go ask Ryan if it's his birthday? It is his birthday. Oh, snap. What? We're planning on, I think we're going to be doing a happy birthday after the uh, round break. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Let's see if a this... A somber one if he loses, and a, a more joyous <laughs> one. <laughs> All righty. Uh, but yeah, Wednesdays with uh, me and uh, James and Will in the Wednesdays uh, is going to be great. <laughs> I'm going to make that an official thing. <laughs> Will, and James on, <laughs> Will and James on the Wednesdays. We are commenting X-Wing. <laughs> <laughs> what are the lists that the people will bring? <laughs> Let me know if you guys want that official intro for every one of their streams. We can make it happen. All right, we're dropping a focus here on that red Jedi Knight. Uh, looks like he's f facing down that Tensari Point veteran. He's currently sitting in the bullseye. If it went straight, we're just gonna we're gonna have some bullseye action. All right, and we're getting a bank here. It looks like that sensory point prioritizing going after the lat. The people, the people want the official intro. Will? Oh yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna be, make it happen. It'll be great. It'll be great. Uh, <laughs> Devin uh, asked me when I fly I flew. Uh, Imperial Aces, uh, Vader, Grand, and Soon Tier. I uh, I didn't want a Rebel Joust. As as probably good as it would have been. Um, I wanted to fly some ships. All right, so we did see that barrel roll from the blue Tensari Point veteran to get that bullseye on, and the red M3A. They're going to go ahead and get bullseye as well after banking in. Looks like they're prioritizing getting that ship off the board. Let's go ahead and hide those dice here for a second. I promise you I'll forget to turn it on. Here is Kanan. Did Kanan bump into Kanan did Sarasu? bump there into Sarasu. All right. I think the Jedi Knight bumped into him bef before, previously. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe he didn't bump because he took a target lock there. Must have just been real close. That's right. Tight maneuvers. With the upcoming bump rules, you're going to have to get real good at those. <laughs> I think everybody's going to get real familiar with Wiggle Room. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be, it'll be interesting, interesting to see if pilots like Sarasu and others that encourage you to fly real close to your friends will... Um, maybe be decreased in price, relieved of some of that, uh... That burden? Yeah, exactly. So, first attack here, crit spend here on the Jedi Knight. That was Sarasu trying to dig in some damage. Nothing there. And here we go. Looks like we have... The March of the Jedi. Steven is the first player. We're going to go ahead and use Kanan's ability to reduce the attack. Double blanks. Target lock. Double blanks. Ooh, fire convergence. The uh, Warthog letting everybody down here. I'm telling you, you, can't shake him. Looks like we just barely have a range two. Might be going into the blue one if it's going to end up just being range two anyway because it's the one without mods. And yes, going into blue. Two hits and a focus. Spend for three. Looking yeah. to dig in some consequential damage here. One squiggle. That's going to be half points there on the blue Tensari. That puts Steven in the lead right now. 48-51. And I think, is this the lat shooting? Yep, shooting at probably only Sarasu there. One hit, one crit. Should be fine. And safe. Uh, 
And here we go. Zach is beginning his march here. Hit crit. Critical damage goes through. And that's going to end up being the last shield on the Red Jedi. Yeah, yeah that was Kanan shooting. Yep. Now we're ready for the range ones and bullseyes here. So it looked like bullseye range two, range one. So either way. Oh, ooh, no, it was bullseye range one. Bullseye range one. Two uncancelable crits all going through. All of them. Well, and then tank from just a 34 point ship. So good. So one, two, three, four. We have a damage sensor array. And, and fuel leak. And a fuel leak. All right. That wasn't predictive. I just, he, he previously had a fuel leak, so he's probably dead then. All right. So yeah, Unless they're debating. So he takes the sandwich sensor array. All right. We'll see if they can resolve it on their own. If they need a little help, we can help them out. Might be a question of the order in which the cards came out. Looks like we're good. Looks like we're fine. Down to one or two hull. We got to figure that out. This might be a moot point, though. Yeah, with this auto blaster coming in. Double crits, uncancelable. Yeah. The arc goes yeah, down direct, and a direct, direct hit leagues, to boot. A million, a million cards. <laughs> Deal them all out here. Go. Oh. Let stabilizer. Yeah. She gone. Uh, well done for Zach for busting through that front line of Jedis and uh, attacking the real support ship here. That's right. Scoring 125 points so far to 51. Regen the Force. <laughs> Nano Antonio comes over here. Mega damage. Yes. One would call it mega damage. I would. Oh, they're talking about what symbol it is. Yeah, that's the that's the G in the GSP up there. My mm -hmm. little uh, helmet logo. Yeah, it's just sideways. <laughs> it's a spinny bit. Um, possibly the the second version of uh, of that token might end up being more of like a kind of this type of shape where it will stay it'll stay facing one way the entire time mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know spinny circle is kind of fun too <laughs> it's certainly easier to make sure it fits in right yeah so, we'll see Castle Prime says auto blasters are the 2.0 TLT no not even no I disagree powerful but not uh, not depressive. They they certainly can change these like uh, two attack dice ships into a pseudo three attack. But like if you start comparing to like uh, like strikers, interceptors, uh, attack shuttles, the other cheap three dice attacks, uh, these Tarsari point veterans are still more expensive than those base models. So they're paying for a little bit more. Uh, but they do have advantages like the initiative and the able to take marksmanship disadvantage though is that they very rarely reposition they hate bear rolling they'd probably rather target lock mm -hmm. so they just feel so slow like compared to a striker or an interceptor uh, which could definitely be a hindrance to them but if you know what you're doing with them you you make sure that you're uh, what do I say? Uh, you K turn often because mm -hmm. you can't turn or you can't boost when you turn. That's right. And here we go. Single crit on the first attack coming in. Oh, just the road roll. Yeah, road we're, roll. we're done with the tax deal. <laughs> oh, ties, ties. Double tie. What? Don't do it again. Trail mix. Okay. Uh, they were. They wanted it. They wanted it. <laughs> I could imagine. Could you imagine like three? Could you? 
<laughs> oh man, could you imagine like, uh, well, like telling you from like, come on, man, we need, like let's hurry up. I I want to get two more yeah, rounds two in more the turns, game. And you're yeah, just, just like tying. stuck rolling, <laughs> rolling road. <laughs> like no, my time. I mean, I guess there's a, there is the possibility to where you don't get to play the game for 75 <laughs> minutes because you're so busy just r rolling, rolling road. road. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> just like guys, you gotta deploy, but like we can't. <laughs> we I need. Don't know who's I, we first. don't know who's first yet. Uh, w Will I? <laughs> if that is, if we are blessed with that moment in history um they're probably gonna at one point ask to turn like can we just stop this and just shake it no <laughs> no you keep you keep going it's the rule can, can we just roll one die please yeah. can we just call it <laughs> they landed it like lands on its side perfectly like <sighs> can, can we have some math head some some somebody who's good at math f find out what is the percentage chance for uh just even the even like a double tie. Let's go. Let's go double tie, and I'd lo I'd love to see the percentage chance for like ten times. Ten in a row. times. Jeez, ten ties. That'd be a very, very, very small number. <laughs> Seventy-five minutes of road <laughs> rolls followed by final salvo ties. <laughs> It's exponential. I want it. Uh, yeah. Give it to me. I'm I want to sure know what like, it is. Yeah, getting to the 10 to the 5th power kind of stuff or whatever. 0 to the 4th. I forget how exponentials work. <laughs> exactly. So you're saying there's a chance. All right. So looks like Kanan is uh, he's choosing to, he chose to boost this turn. What? He wants to, he wants to really boost. get in and help with that front arc three dice sure attack does. four at range sure one does. see if he you called, can uh joust called, that jedi called that k turn from the jedi so get some pressure on actually kanan's the yeah he's the only primary with a uh, four attack value out there for for zach's team all right here we go sarah sue Getting it started. And here we go. Two hits. Steven getting it started here. Oh, okay. We might actually get some damage. Sarah Sue, no trigger there. He's going to go ahead and spend the focus. Was hoping to avoid doing that on Sarasu. Wants to hold on to those yeah, half points. This is, this is the problem that uh, Steven's having is that once you get into a situation to where these M3As are only taking one shot per round, mm -hmm. they are very difficult to put damage through, especially with that reroll and focus. We have a Kanan charge here. Uh, or force charge, I guess. And, and the reroll save Sarasu. All right, we'll see what uh, the Hawks and M3As have to say. Uh, Nano, I would say quite a bit, especially in the opening joust where they were trying to shoot at the range two ships and not the, the range threes in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the combination of Kane and Jarrus and Sarasu is pretty powerful. One hit. And spend for one. No damage. Ooh. Two hits. Two hits. And, oh, Steven only getting one. Looks like we are going to start some, doing some damage to that yellow Jedi Knight now. All right. Well, here's the big shot of the round. Can Kanan clear off? This Jedi. 
has I believe three that holes. is his lock as well, the A lock out there. Big money. Has a lock. Full string, four oh, yeah. hits. Looking Goodbye. at that Jedi. Ooh, gonna have to get the natties here, Dion. Natty? Nope. Not today. Got him. Just enough to put him off the board. Let's go ahead and put some S in the chat for the Red Jedi Knight. It fought so hard. Yeah, if we was closed down here, it's not impossible, but less and less likely here. With, it's just Kane and Jarrus mm -hmm. really, so really affecting. Uh, said in the beginning of the game, the fewer shots you have per round, the more valuable Kane and Jarrus mm -hmm. is. Which is, it, it creates an interesting conundrum for target priority in the opening for, for Zach's list. Because mm -hmm. if you are ignoring Kanan, mm -hmm. right, you're ignoring He's Kanan, you're gradually losing ships on both sides. It, it becomes uh, hard, hard decisions. And like you said, the value of Kanan and one-on-one, -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one match with a moldy crow Kanan, uh, that's, that's a bad time. Yeah, you had to be a pretty powerful ship. I flew a lot of Kanan in XTC, and it really opened my eyes to, oh man, the value of that. Because uh, it really just says give a deplete out to somebody mm -hmm. with almost perfect information, right? Yeah. If it was like start of activation or even start of combat, it would be a different thing. Did Kanan spend the focus still to tokens? Uh, he, def he definitely did spend that. Where, are there two there? Is it two or is it there's, just There's one? definitely two stacked there. We'll see. Can you put the dice cam back on, though? Yeah. Oh, well. We don't need to watch the road rolls because we got the fancy tokens. We'll see. If he puts a, if he puts a third focus token down, I'll... Okay. I'll let him know. Did he start with two or three is the question. Well, he boosted, and you can only have two at a time. True that. True that. I believe he did have two. And then right. We'll see if he corrects it. Sometimes it's one of those you, you figure it along the way. Definitely. Right. He, he might be just more looking at it as just one token. I'll politely ask him if he spent it on offense, even though that's a rhetorical question. Check one, two. That was weird. Okay. Weird. We should be back. Okay. Yeah. Check, check, check. Should be good. All right. Yeah, first for a second, like our audio interface was just like, nah, fam. <laughs> I don't want to. All right. Where are we here? So it looks like that Tensari Point did a red maneuver. Or I think Sarah Sue failed the K turn. Failed the K turn. That's what happened there. Oh, Zach getting a little greedy. Well, he's he's trying to get everybody back to Sarah Sue, right? Get mm -hmm. 
get into range one of Sarasu, get in Kanan's mobile arc. As a note, we have been talking about, can you throw up Kanan one more time? Yeah. Just as, as a note, uh, unlike his Rebel version, Scum Kanan does need to have that ship in his mobile arc, uh, the mm -hmm. Defender specifically. Or, him, or if it's himself, or, it works or too. Or himself, of course. I missed that so many times on the initial <laughs> reading of that card. I'm like, are you sure? Well, what's what's the second word of that card? You. <laughs> There's another another uh, shield down on that yeah. yellow Jedi Knight. Yeah, Kanan gets the plink Kanan there. Kanan plinking away. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's tough target priority right now. Let me take this cannon off. Yeah, tough target priority because you got uh, you got blue at half. Mm hmm But he's going away from you. Probably gonna K turn. We go five K. Oh yeah. Get in, enable the the auto blaster. Mm hmm Fourteen. 14 minutes left in the round. He's calling it? Okay. All right. Well, with that, uh, we're going to go ahead. Steven's putting in the handshake. Congratulations, Zach Rigidi, for winning his top 16 match and moving on to the top eight. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, Row 6, 626, Chief, and J List, our Grand Admiral Patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron out.